Hello, uh, welcome to the websites and research workshop. My name is Alberto Romero. I'm one of the librarians at Santa Monica College, and I use the pronouns he, him, and his. This is just some housekeeping. Um, we want to respect one another, use appropriate names and pronouns, use the raise hand feature in the question when it's question and answer, and also if you have any comments or chat questions, make sure you enter them in the chat box and I will respond to you. Um, since I am hosting this alone um, and we don't want to enter any interruptions. So let's move on. So there's a difference between databases and websites. When it comes to databases, they're great for locating peer review articles, sources, and if you were to search maybe Google for a peer review article, what it's going to do is usually take you to the publisher's website and charge you a fee. When in turn, you could have found that same article in the databases at Santa Monica College. So that's something to take in consideration. There's also something different about uh, these sources. Uh, the peer review articles, or whether it's thesis, dissertations, all scholarly, and you'll find them mainly at academic institutions in their databases. They have, they're written by professionals and experts in the field. They're gonna be definitely gonna have a lot of facts and they're gonna be checked. Citations and bibliography so you can trace the work. So if maybe there's something that you might have read in an article and you wanna explore a little bit more, then you could seek that uh, information from the citations or bibliography. And also, uh, they help you narrow your search down. They are, uh, they're very good in that sense. And they're updated frequently. And, and something that you need to do is make sure that the publication dates are current. And whereas the difference with websites, anyone could write anything regardless of their expertise, right? Um, they have uh, content that is not necessarily checked by experts in the field. They often don't provide information necessary to complete correct citation, often aren't organized to support student needs, and may not indicate when a page has been last updated. I'm going to show you where to go to find peer review articles or scholarly journals, and that's going to be the library's website. You could search OneSearch, or you could search the databases. When you search databases, you'll see you could look at all of the databases, look at ebooks, articles or ebooks that might relate to art and architecture, business resources. So if you're looking for a maybe a business profile, then you would see uh, you look at the business resources link and maybe select business source elite and to find article uh, reports on companies. So that's really good for that. There's the health and sciences literature. So if you're doing literature review, anything for an English course, this, this is where you wanna go. Anything about current events, this would be an excellent link to go to. And also uh, if you're like in the sciences, then you would go to this. But if, like you're wondering what to write about, there's this opposing viewpoints and context is a really great database. It's gonna want you to authenticate. So use your um, Canvas login information to log in. And you could see um, it's going to usually talk about current events. And it's broken down into subjects and topics, business, law, society and culture, energy, environmentalism, national, national debate topics, war, diplomacy, health and medicine, science, technology, or you could select browse all of the 472 issues that we have. And maybe you're wondering about cyberbullying. So you, maybe you could, you could do the uh, search key on either a Mac or a PC, if that's the F8 key on a PC, and uh, Command F for a Mac. And maybe you're gonna, you can go ahead and type in cyberbullying. And you'll see it's going to take you directly to that topic. So you click on cyberbullying. And it's going to give you a blurb of information about it. 
you could search within. So if there's someone that or something that an event or someone that you might have heard about that was cyber bullied, then you might want to go ahead and enter their name or the event. It's broken down into different categories and formats, viewpoints. So if you're writing a per persuasive paper, argumentative paper, then you want you may want to look at the viewpoints, academic journals, different viewpoints and references, images, audio, video. So there's a lot that you could do using Gale in context. So I'm just going to exit because this is a quick run through. And also academic search complete. This is where you're going to use keywords, maybe Boolean, uh, Boolean uh, terms like and, or, or not. But maybe if you're doing it on cyber bullying, and you just click search, you're probably going to get a lot, right? We got 2,482. So you might want to uh, maybe put an Instagram or body image. And it brought us down to 28, right? On the left-hand side, you'll notice the different filters. So full text, which is great because you want to make sure you're able to read the article. Uh, maybe you need a peer review article. These are written by experts in the field. You see it went down to seven. And publication dates range from 2016 to 2019. That's just a quick run through on our databases. And uh, let's move on to the next slide here. So web sources are helpful to look for current information, example, COVID-19, anything that relates to um, maybe public, uh, the health of the public or news and current events. So that's when a website's going to be important to look at. But you want to make sure that you don't just take what the first thing you hear, you know, you want to make sure that there, you get more information and because sometimes news will change. It's not fluid, right? Maybe you need government documents, publications, reports, like maybe IRS forms or uh, maybe statistical information, then that would be uh, a going, it would be great to search maybe a government website. And sometimes you can't find enough information in books or databases. This is a very interesting fact, but did you know that only about 4% of what you find on the internet is free? The rest, there's either a, you have to pay for it. And for instance, there's about roughly 4% where you can Google Bing or use the different um, search engines. And for instance, like there's also information that is um, confidential, like maybe medical records, ed educational records. So uh, these are locked and kept safe, right? For the most part. Um, and then there's that 6% from the dark web, private communication, contraband sales, illegal information, encrypted sites. Something to take in consideration. So not everything you find on the web will be free. Uh, it might be inaccurate, biased, outdated information, only have a limited amount of scholarly information that's available for free. So there's a method to evaluate websites using what's called the CRAP method. And this is a, this is a criteria that you can apply to, apply to all the information that you find. So um, you can compare and uh, maybe look at the information, uh, and what are you going to do? You're going to use currency, relevancy, accuracy, authority, and purpose. So what is the CRAB test? Well, it was created by Sarah Blakesley of the University of, of Calif California at Chicago's Miriam Library. It's an acronym for the general categories of criteria that can be used to evaluate information you find. So, if you decide to use the CRAP test, um, make sure you follow these different um, guidelines here. For currency, you want to make sure that the information you find is current. Uh, when was it published? Also, uh, when was it last updated or revised? Is the information outdated? These are questions you want to ask yourself. Are the links functional? Is it relevant? Is it important to your informational needs? So that's something that you need to look at. Was it written for the audience and intent? 
and the level? Would you be comfortable using the source for your research paper, right? It might be too technical. Um, it might not look professional. So these are things that you might need to look at. The authority also, who is the publisher, the creator of the source? Do they have the, any credentials? What uh, organizations or academic affiliations do they have listed? Right? You wanna make sure if the author is, um, like if they have the authority to actually even write for a story, an article, research paper, anything that deals uh, with maybe a source that they want to convey as factual, right? Do they have contact information? Is there a way to contact them to maybe get gather more information or just ask questions, right? And the accuracy, is it reliable, truthful? correctness of the content. Where does the information come from? Is it supported by evidence? Has the information been reviewed or refereed? Can you verify the information from another source and the purpose? What's the reason that it exists? Do, do the authors make their intentions clear? Is the information fact, opinion, or propaganda? Does the point of view appear objective or impartial? Are there political ideologies, cultural, religious, institutional, or personal biases? One thing and clues that you can look at are the URL domains from websites. So you might wanna look, for instance, if you're looking for educational, uh, Maybe, maybe the ed.edu higher educational, there's something that you do need to know about this. Sometimes you might find a paper that's written by um, a student. So you need to take into consideration whatever you do find uh, in an educational institution. If it's, if it's something that you're gonna use for your research paper that it actually is refereed or pureed. Government agencies, right, we, um, the .gov, the dot orgs, nonprofit organizations and advocacy groups. Now these might have biases or have an agenda and might also want to uh, collect donations. So this is something that we need to be very careful with the dot orgs. The dot coms are commercial organizations, shopping, news and information, dot net. It's a network provider where you could spon sponsor your own personal website. Uh, the INT is for international organizations, and the dot mil is for military. One thing that you do want to take into in consideration is the language, biased versus unbiased language. Take this scenario. On the first floor of the UWF library, there's a Starbucks coffee shop, which was named after a character in Mobile Dick, Moby Dick. Now, you see this guy saying best coffee on campus. The uh, UWF Library Starbucks has the best coffee on campus despite being named after a character from Moby Dick, who's totally inferior. Quick Quack, the Snuggly Cannibal. Now let's look at the words. Best, despite, totally inferior, snuggly, these are prejudices, right? So take that into consideration when you're looking at the, at the actual content of the website or an article. Now is Wikipedia a reliable source? Yes and no. There, it's not an evil uh, website or uh, it's like, like Wikipedia. So one thing that it does offer is basic information, but you cannot use it, you can't cite from actually using Wikipedia. So anyone can edit Wikipedia. Wikipedia references list primary and secondary sources that can be used in your research, however. And going on to fake news, here's uh, a quote. What is fake news exactly? Fake news is just as it sounds, news that is misleading and not based on fact or simply put, 
Fake news has the intention of disseminating false information, not for comedy, but for consumption. And this is by Barbara Alvarez, uh, Pu Public Libraries in the Age of Fake News. And here's the source. How do you spot fake news? You want to consider the source? Click away from the story and investigate. Look at maybe Google uh, the story and see if it, how many times it comes up. You want to read beyond the headlines because they might want to click, they might want to catch you. And so you're going to click on that story. So what's the whole story about? Check for the author's credentials. Are they real? Can you find, do they have any contact information? Now, do they have any supporting sources from what they're trying to convey? Click on those links, determine if, it, if the information given is, uh, is actual, supports the story. Check the dates also. Look, uh, if it's an old date, maybe if, if, the dull, if it's an old date, you might not want to use it, right? Is it a joke? Um, if it sounds too outlandish, it, it might be satire. So research. Now check the biases also. Consider your own beliefs could affect your judgments. And when in doubt, you want to ask uh, experts, a librarian, consult, maybe a fact-checking site. Beware of sites that contain the uh, suffix LO. For instance, newsflow or end with .com, .co. These often present false information for historical purposes. Now also, um, if you find or you come into a website that's all in caps, uh, you might, it's the design might not be, it's amateurish, right? So you need to look at the design of a website. Memes are found on Facebook or other social sites. Google the topic of a meme or other doubtful story. Is it a legitimate information news? You find, maybe you'll find that it's covered somewhere else. And clickbait, of course, sensationalist. Uh, headlines and odd photos, whose purpose is not to publish legitimate news stories, but to increase traffic at a website. Take this in consideration, breaking news. Whatever you hear in the first couple of hours after a major news event, you should probably take it all with a grain of salt, says Andy Carvin, NPR senior uh, strategist. Now look at this image here. Breaking news, Google bans cat pics on the internet. Does that sound like legitimate to you? So in the immediate aftermath, news outlets will get it wrong. Don't trust anonymous sources. Don't trust stories that cite another's uh, news outlet as the source of the information. There's almost never a second shooter. Pay attention to the language the media uses. We are getting reports, could mean anything. We are seeking confirmation, means they don't have it. News outlets has learned means it's a scoop or it's going, to, it's going out on a limb. Look for news outlets close to the incident. Compare multiple sources. Big news brings out the fakers and the photoshoppers. Beware reflective retweeting. Some of this might be on you, so make sure you check yourself, right? Now, let's look at the seven types of myths and disinformation. There's satire or parody, no limit to cause harm, but has the potential to fool and mislead, right? Misleading content, misleading the use of information to frame an issue or an individual. Imposter content, when genuine sources are impersonated. Fabricated content, news content is 100% false, designed to deceive or do harm. False connection, when headlines, visuals, or captions don't support the content. False contact, contact. When genuine content is shared with false factual information. 
manipulated content, when genuine information or imagery is manipulated to deceive. Let's look at source one. This is from an article. The uh, DLD soon to release new video game giving Americans control of drones in combat. Let's go ahead and click on the link. So this is a website. This is the uh, website, the Nil Admiral. And let's read this. America's most swell news source. This is a story from August 18, 2015. The DOD to release new video game giving Americans control of drones and combat. Take a minute to read this. So look at the content. Does anything stand out? You could go ahead and uh, maybe um, actually use the chat box if you want to participate. Yes, it does, right? So let's move on from that. Let's look at the disclaimer. The Neil Admirary is America's most swell news of the spurious variety. So the word spurious means fake, right? Um, so you could see this will fall under which, uh, it's a hoop. Yeah, yeah, exactly, it's a hoop. Yeah, that's a giveaway, right? So um, from looking back at the types over here, let me go back. What do you think this would fall under? It's definitely number one, right? Satire or parody. It's false or yeah, it's false. It's exactly fabricated also. So it's more, it could be more than one. So let's go ahead and look at source two. And one thing that we could do is we could use uh, the uh, Google Neil Admiral website and then um, see if what comes up. The website itself will come up. If you put in Google, uh, Wikipedia, going to bring up a little bit of different things. I already looked at the content related media. It doesn't, there's a, um, it's a totally different topic here, uh, what they're trying to sell. So you could see there is no information on uh, looking at uh, the uh, Neil Emery uh, website there. So let's look at source two. Zipline adds zip to medical delivery service with next gen drone that goes 80 miles per hour. Let's look at this website. So here we could see, um, you could share it on the internet, right? There's an author, a date, a time. I'll let you look at it for a second. And let's look at this for a second. Zipline is divided into different team. We have the flight ops who carry about pre-flighting plans, packing and loading the packages and make sure that plane can fly. Then we have health ops, you can deploy more of the people with the knowledge of the product product. 
we may go down to zip line by using SMS or by using uh, WhatsApp. The package is the handle to fly ropes. It's kind of packaging, but that's when we put the vehicle launcher over. Mm -hmm. Vehicle will fly automatically up to the hospital. Mm -hmm. You can avoid experience, you can avoid stock out because the supply chain has improved. That is why it is saved life. Yes. So you could see. Um... There's a video, right, that talks about it. Let's go further. And this is the reporter. So there's a face to the name. And he has a Twitter account, Facebook links. What, what would you think about this particular news story? You could Google, right, zip line, like drone delivery uh, under Wikipedia. And this time it's giving us information about the company. So this is when Wikipedia can come in handy for, uh, to verify information sometimes, right? Not all the time, but I'm gonna say for this situation, yeah, it's giving us information about zip line. Yes, it feels more legitimate, right? Yeah. Exactly. And it has an offer. Very good. Yes. So let's go ahead and move on from here. And it's, it's about here. Very good. We're going to go to the next one here. So now when in doubt, what you want to do is look at the different back checking sites. There's Snopes, one of the oldest debunking sites on the internet, focusing on circulating urban legends, news stories, and memes. There's factcheck.org, which is great for checking up on political claims. PolitiFact, the Pulitzer Prize winning uh, research, uh, researches the claims of politicians and checks their accuracy. Washington Post fact checker focus primarily on political stories. This is something that I just found was the Google back check tools, which look like this right here. You can search facts, results from the web on a person or a topic and the RAND institution tools for fight disinformation online. Click on that, you'll see there's different links here from different sites that you, you can check. Now, when Google, like searching Google, there's some tricks that you could use. For instance, if you're gonna, if you want it to find the tallest building in the world, you could put in the close and open parentheses. Let's see what, let's actually do that search. Tallest building, right? And you'll see that it brings us with these different images, the tallest buildings, that's gonna be Wikipedia. But it gave us actually the, a name of the tallest building. And there's that information. Those, the, these are uh, tips when searching on Google. Misplace my uh, sites, I mean, my, my slides. Bear with me for a second here. Okay, and um, so that was the, you could use the open and close parentheses 
Now, if uh, you're trying to find maybe an unknown word, the asterisk in a phrase where you want to leave uh, the to place the place a placeholder, for example, largest and then the asterisk in the world, that's going to bring up different unknown words. Or you can find searches with or, for example, marathon or race. You could search in for specific sites by putting site in front of a site or domain example, youtube.com or site.colon.gov. Uh, and that's going to search either anything from YouTube, if you were to do that, or anything from a government website. These are other ones here. So specific files, maybe that you're searching for, you would put in file type colon PDF, search for related sites, related, and this is going to find anything related to time.com, social media. So you put in a, a word in front of social media and it should give you different results for that. And also uh, hashtags like throwback Thursday, maybe, and see, yeah, you, you're gonna get different results for that. Um, also, let's say you want to buy a camera and between 50 and $100, you would go ahead and put in camera and then 50 to uh, like that 100. And you, I gave this a test run and it sure work. It did, it'll show you different images. And it also provides the advanced search. So it provides a set of search options that are not available as special operators using the advanced page. You can also filter by language, by time, date, um, user rights. So if you want to find something that you might want to use uh, for a research paper and image or something, you could um, filter it by usage, right, a license. Reading level, basic, intermediate, or advanced reading levels. And also, uh, th these are the advanced commands. Site will search only specific site. Like, for instance, this has Stanford, um, Univer uh, University of Stanford, as an example. File type, this is searching for a PDF. Defining a word, maybe audacity in this case, and title, inspiration, and these different ones here, the asterisk, the minus. Calculator also, you could um, use it to calculate. So 12 plus 68, it should give you, it, it'll give you the results, or the 12% of 68. Weather also, just by putting in weather on the Lulu, movies by your zip code to see what's playing flight status so you could see that there's a lot that you can do with google government documents are great if you're trying to find anything that relates to uh, statistical information um, maybe irs publication so the domain for government is going to be gov so you could do maybe uh, IRS tax forms, site.colon.gov, uh, and it should bring you up to the IRS website. There's also the archives.gov. It's a national archives that was established in 1934 by President Franklin Roosevelt. And it holds uh, holdings back from 1775. So it captures a lot of uh, important information of our history, slave ship manifest, the massive Emancipation proclamation, captured German records and the Japanese surrendered documents from World War II. So this is a really great site if you're doing research for maybe a history class. Census.gov to find census information, statistics, USA.gov information, See, that should work, yeah. So it takes you to the site. There's grants, 
agent and uh, agencies or information about elected officials if you're wondering who your elected official was even job listings money and taxes travel and immigration there we go and uh the cia is uh link uh, so the library link includes various publications including the world Factbook, which includes facts and information statistical information from different countries it looks like this one's not working at the moment but um how i fix that let's see so any questions that you might have about this workshop <laughs> So if you need more information, my name is Alberto Romero, as I, as I stated earlier. Uh, my email address is romero underscore Alberto at smc.edu. You could follow us on Instagram at library underscore SMC, Twitter at library underscore SMC, or Facebook, which is at library.at.smc. And remember, if you have any questions or anything, you could um, chat with a librarian, ask us. So you can go ahead and type in a question. So if the library is closed, you, this is a 24 seven service that you could utilize for your research needs. These are our hours. We are physically open. Monday through Thursday from 9 to 6 p.m. We're closed Friday through Sunday. And uh, these are days that we will be closed. These are resources. We have a YouTube channel, the Ask a Librarian. So that's 24 7. You can book a private study room. There's information about remote instruction. So, any questions before I end the workshop? By the way, if you are uh, doing this for credit, the, the word, the passcode word is evaluate. So the word is evaluate. Any questions before I end the workshop? Well, thank you for attending and make sure you reach out to one of uh, the librarians if you have any questions about your research. Take care and be well. I'm trying to end this here. There's no media here. So. Take care. Bye bye.